Now, I don't think I've ever really read through this before, but from my understanding, this looks like it's supposed to be our narration scene. Um, but I believe this narration scene doesn't really tell us completely of what happens in between each chapter. It more is just like a recap of what happens in each chapter. I like the fact that we're getting a bigger map here, though, of what the continent of Tellius more or less looks like, at least a little bit. Feels like an introduction to the world and explaining the ongoing events. It does, and I like this portrait right here. I mean, this is a little off topic, but uh, I like this portrait of Valencia that just popped up. I really, really like that. But yeah, that's basically what it is. Kind of shows us what the world looks like a little bit with that introduction. And it explains more, I guess, of a summary of things that just happened and what we're about to do. Now here we finally get where the country of Gallia is located and its territories, a rough idea. Now this is the first mention of Lagoos. This is what I was trying to say. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to click through it a little bit before I accidentally spoil anything in case the game says something. But if it doesn't, I'll tell you what exactly Lagoos are. But with Petrine calling them hairy beasts, or whatever the exact words it was that she used, was actually kind of a racist term towards the Lagoos. I love the art here. Now, if you guys pay attention, because that looks like that tiger there is supposed to be a little more blue than anything else. And that cat there is supposed to be a little more yellow. If you guys pay attention to that, that might be a little important later on. <laughs> Tanya, she really doesn't want to see that. Subhumans, that term is also considered a racist term.
for Lagoos. So in this game, as we saw, humans are not actually humans, they're Bjork, but calling them humans is actually like sort of like the equivalent of saying the N-word in real life. And it's the same way for Lagoos by calling them subhumans is the same thing. But the humans are Bjork and the, the subhumans are Lagoos. And here, Ike has actually supposedly never heard of Lagoos before. Which is kind of interesting, considering he lives on a continent with so much prejudice towards the Lagoos. And this is part of the reason why I'm not really the biggest fan of Shannon. It's just, he's so racist and so rude for no reason at all. And his character doesn't really change too much between Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. He's still racist and Radiant Dawn. And here it looks like Soren's explaining to us what each tribe of Lagoos is. And where they're located at. No, I don't think I ever really paid attention to this the first time I played it, but I never really noticed the fact that Shinnin called Ike my boy. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is sort of my first time actually reading through Path of Radiance's story as an adult. The last time I read through the story, I was a kid, so it's interesting for me seeing the difference in perspective and how that changes for me with how I grew up playing this game, as well as Radiant Dawn. Now, I play these two games a lot, but the story itself, I haven't actually read them since I was a kid. Well, I guess Radiant Dawn, I read it a little bit here and there as I was growing up. But still, different perspective, different lenses for me. So you guys are going to get some interesting reactions there. Understand things better when you're older. Exactly. So we're going to... So it's sort of like... I don't know. It's it's going to be an interesting experience for you guys, definitely. Seeing how I might look at things now versus how I did as a kid when I was more reading the story for the first time. Now here, Grail is probably about to say one of the best lines you guys are ever going to see in a Fire Emblem game.
So it looks like we're going to have a decoy force and then the actual force is escorting the princess. Okay, so it looks like we're losing Jin and Gaytree this time around. Yeah, I don't like how rude Jin is. I love this speech right here by Grail. We are family. Basically what I was saying back in part one or two was how I liked how Grail was leading it and how he treated everybody as family, as well as the fact that Boyd and Oscar and all tried to stand up in Rise, all tried to stand up and take place for disobeying Tatanya's orders when they went to go rescue Rolf and Mist. I like how they have that family aspect here in the Grail Mercenaries. They look more like your family, a typical family instead of a typical Fire Emblem Mercenary group. That's part of what I love so much about them. It's basically also, in a way, Grail summarizing Fire Emblem's whole theme with power of friendship, we're all family, bonds, everything else. I love how Grail's just basically summoning all up right here. They must really want to get Alencia. I like how Alencia tried to say she's going to fight.
And I like kind of seeing how we're seeing Ike grow more and more into that leadership role in each chapter moving forward. Because if you guys remember a few chapters ago when he was first in leadership over Titania for some supposedly unknown reason at the time until Rise explained it to us, Ike was not so sure of himself. He was hard down on himself, everything else. But now it seems like he's easing more and more into that leadership role. He never loses that hide and seek. Appreciate Path of Radiance with the different map designs. I do too. That's what I like. That's what I thought was kind of weird about uh, Three Houses when I first played it. Was the fact that it reuses the same maps so many different times. It just kind of switches the angles on you. But that's kind of what I like about the older Fire Emblem game. That you almost always get a different map. Some are generic. Some are really complex maps. But they're all really nice. Now here... There's some interesting things with the forest that I'll show you guys. Uh, I think, I don't know. I don't know how I want to play this chapter. Because sometimes I just go all out attack. I feel like I play this chapter differently every time I play it. Check our items though. Oh, oh boy. Huh. <laughs> I can't trade with Gatrian and Shannon. I forgot about that. Um... What do I want to do here? Trade Rise. Seraph Road. Now we gotta be careful with Rise. Because this stuff is full. So. Huh, huh. Hmm. We gotta be careful, chat. Boy, it's got a hammer. Okay. Dude, what do I want to do here? Wish I had a steel lance to give Oscar. Okay. Oh, wait. My cousin, I share our icon. You know what? Boyd doesn't have anything down there. Now we might have Titania, because I don't think I've ever done this before, but we might have Titania come through and solo this side of the map. And then we'll have everybody else come down this side and take out the boss. Now with bonus XP, with how I told you guys there's something called bonus XP, uh, I don't remember if I said this in one of my earlier uh, parts because it's been so long, but the faster you clear a map, because there's just set turns for it to get the maximum amount of bonus experience for it, then you'll get more bonus experience. But uh, for chapters that are escape chapters, yes, you'll you'll get a lot of bonus experience for meeting that turn condition for the maximum possible amount. But you'll also get more bonus experience in these type of chapters for having everybody in your army leave before Ike escapes the chapter. This chapter can also be used for boss grinding, but we're not going to use this one for boss grinding. Because if I remember correctly, I believe this heal tile, I believe this is a heal tile, will heal the boss, even though it doesn't say heal tile. It should heal the boss a set percent of HP each turn. And then you could just grind off of that if you wanted to, but we're not going to. I want to take that short spear. We got to hurry up and try to get to our base before 4.30. Um... Let's see here. I think this honestly looks good. We might actually put Oscar in the front here. That looks good. Let's check the boss. Short spear. Pole axe. So this guy will do bonus damage to the time you know, with the pole axe. If we're not careful. in Oscar. This guy's a vulnerary. Okay. So we got a short spear, 
pole axe and a vulnerary. But this is something I want to show you guys with how this chapter has a unique mechanic to it. So I know this looks like Titania's out of the forest right here, but she's actually not. She's still in the thicket. We're going to bring her over here, though. And it completely skips the enemy phase. That's what I was wanting to show you guys. So it will skip the enemy phase entirely until I choose to go out in the open. Okay, I think we're going to attack now. Avoid doubling a Myrmidon. That's something you guys won't see every day. And... Oscar running out of the forest to get to a spot. Enemy sees nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Titania. I don't think Titania ran out, though. Well, I mean, and boy, it was sitting right here. <laughs> There's like no cover right there. And enemies still see nothing. <laughs> they are super stealthy mercenaries. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Oscar's on a horse or anything. <laughs> The horse is a stealthy horse. The ninja, guys. That's it. The horse is going to be on the next Fey Ninja banner. Oscar's horse is secretly going to be like the most broken Fey unit we'll ever get. Yeah, maybe I should use the regal sword there. Or maybe I should use the hammer that Boyd has, because I forgot Boyd had a hammer. Tanya going off. Now we got a poleaxe guy there I want to take care of. Oh, he's not going to hit her, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully he doesn't hit her. There we go. Violet might be having some competition here. Our Path of Radiance playthrough is starting to go off with crits everywhere. You will never see crits more on any other channel except for this one right here. That should be our little uh, motto. 
Crits everywhere. Uh, there we go. We can do that. Ouch. I'm really not doing much at all to that guy. Maybe I should have used Regal. Okay, Soren's right here, so hopefully he can help us out on this next turn. With that uh, Armor Knight. There we go, Ike. Now you do damage? Did I get a level up or something that I forgot about? And that's why he's doing damage down to the to the knight. Maybe I got a level up that I'm just forgetting about for some reason. I don't know. That's a great help. Boom. Okay, we are doing a pretty gosh darn good job over here. Um, you're gonna heal Ike. I feel like we're just powering through this. So we got a vulnerary. Don't remember if Tanya had anything, but hopefully not. Hopefully her inventory doesn't get full here. <laughs> that poor guy doesn't even stand a chance. Okay. Use our hand axe again. We have a mage down there. I don't think that guy moves. 
So we have the Myrmidon over here. Myrmidon, I think he moves. Now what? Before we do that, Rise is going to heal you. We'll put Rise down here. Got a mage or someone I want to look out for. Oh, okay. I should be fine. Good job, Ike. Decent. At least you got HP and strength. Get out of here. Then get out of here. He's out of here, guys. We won't have to worry about that mage anymore. Iron Sword, yeah, we'll do that. Oh, Roy, I don't know why, but your comment about Oscar and his horse was kind of funny to me. Well, I guess he didn't mention his horse, but I mean, he's still on a horse. But it was funny to me, and it made my day today. Thank you, all, Roy. Okay, let's get rid of this healer. Because if I can, I might actually make the turn bonus for the bonus XP. Because for this chapter, I want to say it's probably 10 turns. Which means I have two turns to try to defeat the boss and make everybody escape. Bring it. Okay, Boyd. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Boss. Oh. Oh, that doesn't make you feel comfortable. Um. Ike, what are you doing to him? 18. Tanya, what are you doing to him? 22. 
I'll take that. Crit. Not when I want it to happen. But... <laughs> But I guess I'll take it. She got a crit for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Not what I wanted to happen. We were doing so well, guys. And then we had to drop an item there. It's okay, though. We can always buy another one. At least you got a crit for you guys. I don't think Boyd can. Oh, wait, he can reach. Okay. Good job, Boyd. Please be good, level up. Boyd. Boyd, what are you doing? Now, I like to try to heal everybody as much as I can before I make them escape. But I don't think that'll happen this time around. Because it looks like we are literally right at that max bonus experience mark. So I guess we're just going to have everybody escape. And I like how when people escape in this one, they get their own little dialogue for escaping. Now everybody's going to escape. Well guys, we like powered through that chapter. How fast did we beat that chapter? That was like less than... That was like, what, less than 30 minutes? Something crazy. I, I don't know. I feel like we really went through that chapter. Or this chapter. I'm still on it, but. Yeah, that was like 30 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Guys, we destroyed that chapter. In time to end it. I read that too fast and thought Ike was calling Rolf Princess for a second there. Uh, Princess Rolf. Now, I think it's interesting. I don't think I mentioned this before, but with the word Gallia, I think it's interesting that some things pronounce it as Gallia, while others pronounce it as Gallia. Here in Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, it's pronounced Gallia. But in games like Valkyria Chronicles 4, it's pronounced Gallia. Has anybody else ever noticed that? It's just me.
You noticed it before? Okay. Well, I'm not going crazy. <laughs> I like how worried Mist is with her brother. I like the sibling relationship between it. I just like seeing different sibling relationships in general. My brothers and I are completely different. So sometimes it's weird for me. Like my brothers and I, we will go at each other's throats all the darn time. But then like if we have that one outside force from our family, we all gang up on it. And then we go right back to getting at each other's throats. Kind of funny. But I think it's interesting seeing the different sibling relationship between every pair especially I like I can miss I like their relationship with each other I guess I shouldn't say with my brothers we go at each other's throats we more we more mess with each other we push each other's buttons <laughs> We do that a lot. Basically, basic sibling stuff. Except we go to the extremes with the basic sibling stuff. Please tell me that didn't just fill Rise's inventory. I forgot about this. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Please don't tell me you just filled his inventory. I don't think she did. Because I think it would have come up in the middle of the conversation that she did. Oh, uh, no. Well, guys, I done messed up. <laughs> I messed up, guys. Oh, I guess we're going to get rid of the Iron Sword. I tried so hard, chat. So hard. Oh, wait. I feel like I'm going to need the sword more than the axe. And you guys, you guys will see why I feel like I'm going to need the sword more than the axe. There's something I wanted to see there. Okay. It was just something with what Alentia said. I can't say it right now. But I will later once we beat Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. So I guess I'm saying, remember this word. Remember my words right here in case you can get thrown back in my face whenever we beat Radiant Dawn. With something Alentia said with that. With her prayers to Ashroth. There we go. I think that was the max turn to clear bonus, guys. I think we did it. And for those of you guys that are watching this in separate parts, we'll see you next time. But chat and I are going to go on. We're going to try to get to the base before we end our live stream here.